Yeah, that's right. Welcome in. Welcome back, folks, to an edition of Notre Dame Feels Close. What are the final pieces missing that they need to actually get over the hump in a way they haven't in 25, 30 years edition of the Always Irish Show? As always, thank you for being here. You can find that program on YouTube. Do it. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Appreciate it very much. Give the video a thumbs up. That helps Johnny out as well. Notifications on. That way you alert it every time a new episode drops. I know you don't want to miss it. Twitter. Search bar. Always Irish. Or at Always Irish Inc. Emails. Always Irish. ND at gmail.com. Audio only. Anywhere you want it. You can get it if you don't want to see my face. Don't blame me. Call in lines. 312-988-15. You dial it up. Tell Johnny all you heard and seen. Instagram, Facebook, Always Irish Inc. You don't want to look at me. You don't want to hear me. But you want to know my thoughts. USA Today, Irish Wire. How about that for an option? Patreon.com slash Always Irish. Former captain, leading tackler, by the way. Mike Goolsby and myself breaking it down by the paywall. What could go wrong? Nothing. Nothing. It all goes well over there. Thanks for those that have joined. Okay. Welcome in. Welcome back. Hope you're staying warm. Hope you're staying dry. Whatever the hell's going on, wherever you're at. I just hope you're doing well. Who's ready for spring? I am already. I'm already ready for spring. We're in freaking January. I'm ready for it. So let's take a moment. Take some honest stock of where Notre Dame is right now as a program entering Marcus Freeman year three, the year three adventure. More specifically, what parts of Notre Dame are ready to truly compete? Truly compete. That means winning playoff games level. And I got to be careful to not just say making the playoff. Notre Dame's done that multiple times. And then they lose by 900 points in the playoff game. That's like not the bar. You don't get credit for making it there and then humiliating yourself, which cuts the legs off the great season you had and makes it mean nothing. No. When I say truly compete, I mean playoff winning level stuff. Playoff game level winning stuff. All right? So you're in a position where you're asking what parts of the team are truly ready to compete or capable of competing at that level and what areas still need work. The foundation is strong. All of that big, big, huge picture stuff. It's stable. Sure. There are things we would alter and we would adjust pops into my mind, making it easier for undergrad transfers to get in that. Like, I would want that to be further along, but there's a little bit of progress there. But I'm saying the main big things where you it doesn't matter what you do, you can't win unless you have this these stability underlying girders there. That's there. It's there. Kelly deserves some credit for that. Swarbrick deserves some credit for that. The baseline infrastructure is there that needs to be to allow Notre Dame to succeed. And not all places have that. So it's worth mentioning. It's worth mentioning. All right. So the foundation is strong. I feel like the culture is pretty strong. Like all of that stuff's in place. Um. I've mentioned this before. It's never okay to lose games. But if you notice, the way Notre Dame's losing games is different now. They're not playing anybody where it's like, wow, Notre Dame athletically does not belong in the same field. And this is 2012 Alabama and Notre Dame. Like that was adults playing against children in football is what we had no business being on the same field. We were half as fast as they were, half as big as they were. Like, literally, it was that obvious and bad. So 
there are these changes that indicate to you that Notre Dame's getting closer and getting closer and, you know, they're not getting ran off the field in the biggest game of the year. Like, I get that those are bars we had to compare to before. We're seeing some of that. How do you get over the hump? What's missing? Now, I wanted to make this mostly about the team and the roster, not more of an angle of like, I need Marcus to get better at this and this and this. I'm making this mostly about the roster, and then I got one thing that isn't. So keep that in mind when I'm looking at these final pieces. Roster first. Number one elite quarterback play. You could have guessed it. This goes without saying. Most important individual position in all sports. Notre Dame has not been good enough there. Not good enough there. Not close to good enough there. No. For the 1,000th time. I need a guy, you win the biggest games you play because of. I need a quarterback, you win the biggest games you play in because of. Let that all sink in. There's a lot of nuance there. There's a lot of ingredients baked into that one statement I just told you. A guy that puts the team on his back and you win those biggest games because that one guy could do enough to change the outcome. We have not had that forever. Needs to change. And especially in an expanded playoff format where Notre Dame's going to have to play another month of games that it will hold the ultimate trophy or whatever, guess what? You are not getting through that as Notre Dame with a great defense alone and then kind of a good run game sometimes, except not against any good defenses, and that's who will probably be in the playoff and then no passing game. No, the teams you're going to play are getting too good to allow a team that is not well-rounded to make that run. Too hard of a run for a month. So I need elite quarterback play. The kind Notre Dame should have every single year by merit of just being Notre Dame. And we've let that slip away. And we're paying the prices of it the last 30 years. Number two, what better wide receivers? Link to number one. I want to be very clear. Notre Dame does not need the best wide receiver core to win it all. You don't need Ohio State's recruiting at wide receiver. You don't need all that but it's got to be vastly better than what it's been. It needs to at least be somewhat of a real threat that a defense needs to be concerned with and plan for. Doing this does not hurt the run game. It actually helps it. That's what I hear when I complain about wide receivers and needing more threats there. It's like, well, John, they want to be a power running team. You you always say Notre Dame ain't tough enough. You want them to give up that and start throwing the pill all over? No, silly. No, dummy. No. No. If you are able to even present a reasonable, actionable, direct out of your wide receiver, that's going to help the run game. They're going to have to scheme for it, plan for it, worry about it, adjust. You can't sell out in the run game if you're genuinely worried you're going to get beat on the back end. So the more you can present that, the more opportunities there's going to be for a big running hole for these backs that are young, athletic, and I love. And I love, love. He could be one of them. You follow? You dig? So that's a misperception that if I ask for a better passing game, that means we're abandoning the run ID. No. One thing feeds into the other. The better you're at at both of them, the better the other one's going to be. Look at the good stuff Notre Dame's accomplished recently, all with like no passing game other than to the tight ends. It's a joke. If you literally had to make teams worry about getting burnt like that, it opens everything up, opens a playbook up opens the whole field up. Anything could be a run or a pass play on any down. Oh, baby, it's beautiful. I want it. I miss it. I like it. So 
when I say I need improved wide receivers, it doesn't have to be number one in the whole country, whatever, but it has to be enough to make a defense worry and plan for it because then it starts to affect everything else. And it's like, listen, I love Jordan Faison and I love that story. But it is an indictment on the program, how it came to be. Both of those are true at the same time, you guys. Love that they found him. Love that he's getting an opportunity. Love that he's so young and he's going to be good. But it is embarrassing the way it came to be. Should never be. Where you literally have no bodies and you have to elevate practice guys to play in real games. Like, both are true. Compliment to him. Glad the staff found him. But it, a a bad look to need to go down that path to begin with. Ends up, you got lucky and found a great one. That doesn't mean that the process wasn't a red flag. Let's be clear. Number three. So those are the first two. Elite quarterback play, wide receiver. Those things are tied. Number three, multiple monster defensive linemen. Not one. I said multiple. Not one. Multiple. Monster D linemen. Not sometimes on a third down, they'll really flash and get around the edge and whatever. No, 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 no. That's not what I mean. I'm talking problems that have to be schemed for. Multiple guys that require double teams. Chips, play schemed away from them. Pure disruptors. I need more than one guy on that defensive front that just by being out there, it alters the gameplay. Even if plays don't go to them, their presence alters what the other team's going to do. I need more than one. I don't just, I'm getting greedy. I don't need one. I need more than one. I need a couple. Maybe Young is one of them. Just got that five star. Maybe he's one of them. I need multiple. Now, oh, John Fosky, bro, I said consistent. Not every once in a while they flash every third game. They have a great game off the edge. No, that ain't. That's not what I'm talking about. Talking about problems. Talking about a nose in there that just, there's nowhere to run and the whole pocket's collapsing because that guy's collapsing it. I'm talking relentless pressure around the edge that has to be accounted for. When you look at how good Notre Dame's getting on the back end of the defense, if you could add this to the front end, you're, that's, that is a truly elite defense. So I need more up front on the D-line. Number four. This one may or may not surprise people. I don't know. I need Notre Dame's O-line to be better. I need Notre Dame's O-line to be better. I don't think they've been tough enough and they just don't, they don't, they don't get results against the good defenses we play. That's completely unacceptable. It's offensive and it's a joke and it needs to get better. And again, if you want to think of this in terms of the new college football playoff, cold weather playoff game type thing, you're going to want that. That old line's going to have to be a part of what you do offensively in that dynamic. You want to run the ball, you're playing the top 12 teams. It ain't going to be easy. Notre Dame needs to be more of a bully in a way Michigan was with the running game. Uh, I realize you just barfed when you hear me say, I wish Notre Dame was more like Michigan. Even I'm able to put my hatred aside for five seconds enough to say, I wish Notre Dame could run the ball the way Michigan does. I, I hate them. I, I just, I'm telling you, I wish they would. Michigan got into a mode this year where it was like, yeah, we know we're running it. You know we're running it. We know you know we're running it. And guess what? We don't give a flying shit. We are running the ball anyways, and you ain't going to stop it because you ain't man enough. Guess what happened? They ran it all over everybody, even when they knew it was coming. It was beautiful, and it won them, won them the title, and I'm jealous that's the kind of O-line play I need that we don't get. We don't get. I am not impressed by any numbers you put up or what you look pushing around, all this Central and Miami, Ohio, and the, the HBCU 
and Navy. No, 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 I don't care. Push around Texas A&M's front next year. Now I'm interested. That's the bar. And you're not making any noise in the playoff without it. I need the O-line to be better practically and mentally. I need more killers on that line. I need dogs. I need guys that want to break people in half. I, I need it. And I need more of that attitude up front. So the O-line's got to get better too. So my four roster spots are elite quarterback play, wide receivers that at least make teams worry so that it opens everything out, doesn't limit the offense, multiple monster D linemen, not just one. That O-line's got to get bigger, better, tougher, undersized. Why in the hell? How in the hell? Oh, O-line you, O-line you, John, O-line you. Well, then answer me this if you want to tout O-line you. How do we end up with the center 40 pounds underweight getting bullied around by Duke? Like, Notre Dame's O-line was undersized this year. That's just unacceptable before we even get into anything else. Notre Dame was getting pushed around up front because they had guys that are underweight. Going against bigger defensive fronts. That should never happen if you're O-line U. To have guys that are like 280 up the middle for O-line U? That ain't O-line U. That's P-U. Can't do it. That ain't O-line U. I need you to be bigger and better. Okay? Have an edge to you. Have an edge to you. So those are the four roster things to get Notre Dame over the up. Here's number five. It's a non-roster thing, but a schedule thing. Win the biggest game on your damn schedule sometime. It's the one thing Notre Dame's not done lately. Ohio State, you had two opportunities and you were close, didn't get it done. Kelly, Georgia, two opportunities, get one of the, and it was close, couldn't get it done. Win the biggest profile game on your schedule for the moment that it is. That's Texas A&M right out of the gate. Versus the SEC, it's week one. All the narratives, Notre Dame can't compete with the SEC. To all of that, all that lives. It's a big, big game. Very manageable schedule after this game for Notre Dame. Can they finally win that big one on the schedule when you need it? Texas A&M's the next big chance. And I've been saying forever, I got a feeling if Notre Dame could do it, the floodgates open, you break through the glass ceiling, all that pressure and stress of always failing in those big moments, you would be able to flip it. Beat Texas A&M, gain the momentum heading into the manageable next two months of the schedule till Florida State comes to our place. Baby, you might really be on to something if you could get that done. But the stigma and the big game failure and the record and all the scar tissue and all the bad memories of Ohio State and all, all this stuff, like you could stab it through the heart, but you got to win that game. Texas A&M week one. Notre Dame wins one like that. It'll flip a switch. Your mentality changes from... I think we could do this too. We did this. Those are two different levels of confidence between I think we could do it and we did it. We don't know what it's like once Notre Dame's in the we did it and we have that confidence as a group and we're flying eye and all that. We don't have that. You need to get it. All this could change if Notre Dame wins one of those biggest moments and has that momentum. It could really unlock things. Help recruiting, help in that season. We just, we haven't seen it. Notre Dame doesn't win their biggest games that often. So that's what I'm looking at to get us over the hump. Let me know whether you agree or disagree with any of my bullet points. What else would you have add on there? Add something.